you know, shout out to our fans tonight for coming out and supporting um, and to celebrate the life of Arnie Farron uh, and wear his name on our backs uh, was super cool. Um, and again, you know, we just appreciate everybody coming out and supporting us. Guys, Craig said that this was a kind of a tough week with the coaches really telling you the truth and, and what they thought you needed to hear. Can you maybe share some of what was said in those meetings from the coaches? Um, I think, honestly, the main thing of it was um, we're not playing tough enough. We're kind of playing like weaklings, I guess, is the word I'd use. <laughs> um, and <clears throat> it's just we needed to come out and we need to have a more of a competitive edge each game. And like our last few games were not us. And that <clears throat> in order for us to get back to where we were, you know, we have to continue to use practice as a separator and um, come in ready to go each day and for practice, for games, uh, make sure we take care of our bodies off the court. Um, and we just need more people to um, perform and kind of have everyone step up to, to be elite. Great, so this is maybe your guys' most complete week of the season. I mean, do you feel that way? Do you feel like things have clicked now after those those three losses? Yeah, I, I think it's great to get back on track, obviously, after some tough losses. Um, and I just think, uh, going back to what you guys added about, you know, honesty, you know, being honest with yourself, looking in the mirror, uh, each and every one of us, about what we need to do better. And I think we did that, and I think it's showed uh, the last two games with our performances. Riley, that zone that Washington plays, you know, it seems to give other teams trouble. You guys didn't seem to have trouble. What was, what was working for you guys <laughs> against that zone? Yeah, I think a big thing is taking care of the ball. You know, they're really athletic, and they like to shoot the gaps and create turnovers. Um, and I think... I'm not sure how many turnovers we have, but I think we took care of the ball decently tonight. Um, and then also getting it inside. Uh, and that's something we, we jumped on right away um, after our losses was, you know, attacking the paint, getting the ball inside and playing uh, out of that. Gabe had, did you? Nope. Oh, sorry. Um, Gabe had not really shot the ball well at Oregon game, right, the two LA games. But he shot the ball well these two. How, how critical is it for you guys that, you know, that he plays well and shooting well and is engaged and, and doing what you guys need? You know, I think you know, I'd say it's super important for us. You know, when Gabe's on, um, it brings great energy and it helps us a ton when he's and he's making shots. And, and Gabe's a, he's a shooter. We all know that. And he knows that too. And so he's going to keep shooting even when he's, uh, he's not high and we want him to. Um, when he's even having have his cold games, we need him to keep shooting and um, getting us those shots. And, and you know, we know that they're, they're going to fall. And so, yeah, Gabe's just a huge part of our team. And, yeah, when he makes shots, I think our team just keeps um, rolling. Brandon, Craig talked about on Thursday about how maybe it was a little, I don't, I would, I don't even know if it was uncomfortable at first when like you had to you know, be more of a stretch player in terms of when you have big, big lineups or different things that way. Do you feel like adding that to your game has helped you or kind of what, what's kind of been that situation been like for you? Um, yeah, I'd say it's helped me. I think it's just given me um, <laughs> more of a, an IQ for the game. Um, and just being able to play smarter and play, um, yeah, just throughout multiple spots on the court. And it's just kind of helped me develop as a player and um, kind of get more confidence. That way. Well, you've been with <coughs> excuse me, Coach Smith for longer than some of the other guys. This is only year two here at Utah, and you guys are good. And what's his magic? How does he get programs going so quickly? Yeah, you know, I think, I mean, obviously recruiting, bringing guys in, um, all that. But I just think from being with him, you know, he's a really positive coach um, and he's a player's coach. And I, I think a big thing is just how he develops guys and he believes in everybody. You know, like when you, when you talk about people who are maybe struggling or had a couple off games, uh, he always believes in you and he always does what's best for the players. And I think that's huge. Um, and we all trust each other a ton with his program. And then Brandon, you had to give him a chance, and you, know, you could have taken off. But now that you stuck around, what do you like about the way he does that? Um, you know, I just think, kind of like what he said, like what Riley says. You know, he just coaches just a positive guy, and he instills a ton of confidence in his players. And uh, when he first came in, uh, you know, he was just the way he he talked to me and told me how he saw things going with this program and with me and his expectations with me and my expect expectations for staying here at Utah and playing for him. You know, I just think it was a, um, we just saw it eye to eye and things were 
uh, turning out great, and I'm just I'm glad I, I, I'm here and I love this program and yeah. For for much of the season, you guys kind of been playing on the bubble of maybe an NCAA tournament berth or anything like that. How important is it to have these weekends, especially going into to next week when you've got Oregon, especially with Oregon, who's, who's obviously caused you guys some problems? Yeah, I, I just think, you know, obviously you want to win at home always, and then getting sweeps uh, versus teams, you know, winning both games is huge. I think it separates you from, uh, I guess, the rest of the pack sometimes. Um, <clears throat> but I, I just think, you know, obviously, like, you have goals for the season. Obviously, you want to make the tournament and all that stuff, but... Um, we're big on taking it one game at a time, one day at a time. Uh, and as long as we keep doing that, I think we, we're in a great position moving forward. Brandon, we talked about what the coaches said, but you know, Craig said that he really leaned on um, guys that have been here for four years, you and, and Marco and Jackson and Eli. What were those times like when, as an older guy, you, know, you have to address your teammates and you, know, you have to help this team along in hard times? You know, it's it puts a lot. It's just a lot of responsibility, um, and I think just being around, you know, first of all, this program, and then being around Coach Smith now for uh, a year and a half, almost two. Um, we just got you got to be able to um, help the players understand what's expected and and what is needed to be a successful team. Um, you've had Marco, who's been a part of a, a championship team at Virginia. He knows what it takes to to win. And you've had guys who, uh, most of us on this team, have been a part of a losing season um, like last year. And so we, we know what we sh need to avoid and what we need to do to be better. Just to follow that up, Craig specifically said that at one point Jackson said some powerful things. Mm -hmm. Are you able to share what he said to, to the team? Um, I mean, that's, that's kind of between the team right there. So, uh, sorry, like, but that's just, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was just, uh, we had like an intervention as a team. And, you know, Jackson did have some good words. Um, and I just think we all went through and had something to say um, for our team and for um, each other. And so I think that's just something we've taken and, and applied. How important was it to be able to see Cable goes out, but then Luca comes in and Ben obviously did well to, to see those two guys step up? Yeah, it's huge. You know, Luca uh, coming in, uh, especially late in the half like that, and, you know, he, he changed the pace of the game for us and had huge minutes. Um, so really proud of him. And then Ben's defense, uh, ben, ben played a great game. You know, some stuff might not show up on the stat sheet necessarily, but uh, he, re he really helped us um, out there. And, you know, those are two great players who can help us moving forward. Uh, but it was a great week for the Utes, and now we got to continue it as we move forward and, and get better and better. Greg, can you expand a little bit on how you challenged guys during the week after the two losses in LA? Well, we spoke the truth. We just weren't very good. You know, and th those three teams are really good, right? I mean, uh, the Oregon at UCLA at USC, that's a very difficult trip. Oregon, we knew after getting their, you know, you know, losing by 27 that they weren't going to just uh, lay down. But I just felt like we weren't playing as connected as we needed to be, so challenging guys to make the right play. And if you can't make the right play, then that's a problem, right? And, and the right play can be a lot of things, making the extra pass. Right, making the right read, understanding what we need to do when teams are throwing different things at us. Um, like tonight, for example, and you guys asked the question, how hard is this week of prep, right, um, when Washington plays this kind of zone? And Washington State is very good defense, you know, does a good job defensively. So it always is tough, but I thought we really executed against that zone at a high level and got really good and clean shots and just played very selfless basketball. And then um, – um, and then just challenging guys to be tougher, like mentally and physically, right? So just making those um, tough guy plays on that end of the floor and willing yourself to do those sorts of things. And, uh, and it's got to be everybody. Like our guards got to rebound for us, for example. You know, it's not just going to be BC. It's not just going to be Marco. It's got to be everybody. And so um, – and then challenging guys to make this next step. And I think I might have said this earlier. We got some young guys and inexperienced players, but you get to this time of year, sophomores are not sophomores anymore, especially our sophomores. Like, those guys have had a ton of minutes under their belt, so it's time to take the next step. Our freshmen need to take the next step. Our inexperienced guys got to play like veteran guys. And um, I thought we really took a step forward that way. And then lastly, and I said this in the locker room, I thought our upperclassmen did what upperclassmen have to do for good teams, and that's be leaders, using your voice, and playing with, through your example. And I thought all weekend Marco and BC did that. When I say upperclassmen, I'm saying for our team, guys that have four years in. That's Brandon Carlson, that's Marco Anthony, that's Jackson Brenchley, and that's Eli Ballstead. 
And in some of these closed doors meetings, the things that Eli said, the things that Jackson said were really good and really powerful. And BC and Marco always do that. But like, um, it was good. And you got to be able to speak the truth. Good teams have to handle the truth. Good organizations handle the truth. And, um, and I thought it worked and it got better. Honestly, I don't even know. Um, obviously, I saw him fall down. Um, uh, in the middle of, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, I was like, can we put Kaba in? And he was in the tunnel warming up. I think he'll be fine. He was in a boot, though. So I don't know what that means. I haven't even talked to Trevor, but at halftime, Trevor, you know, said that uh, he he can't go the second half. It seemed filling in for Kevin, though, was Luca Tarlich. He brought uh, energy, aggression from the get. Just what did that do? Luca was outstanding. Um, we said that after the game too. I thought Ben Carlson was really, really good on number one for them. Who's uh, Brooks? What he's the second or third leading scorer in the league, and and he had 17, but it took him 19 shots to do it. And Ben did an unbelievable job on him, and then Luca did. And Luca kind of changed the game for us, right? They had kind of we were ahead by a lot, and they kind of were making a mini run. He gets in there, and of course, right away, you know, he gets called for the foul. Um, but then the next possession, he gets a steal, right, in transition. I think the next possession after that, he gets a shot block at the rim, but we get the offense rebound and score it. And then the next possession after that, uh, he scores. And then the second half, he gets the dunk and the tip pass to BC for a dunk. He was good. I've said all year, like, Luca's a good player. It's just he hasn't been able to stay healthy. So it's just been hard for him to be in a rhythm. And uh, But he's slowly been getting – you know, better and better with his reps in practice. And it just kind of felt like with Kaba out, right, when BC had to take a break, we knew Ben had to play more five. And it also felt like one of those games where, um, because of Luca's versatility, that he would play well in it. And kudos to him for staying ready. And uh, and he really contributed in a big-time way tonight. Gabe okay, had a couple of tough games, Oregon right with two LA schools, but then this weekend he seemed to, he seemed to put it back together. What is – what's – you know, his mindset have been this week, coming off a few tough ones, knowing that he needed to, you know, get back going. His mindset was great. Uh, and, and you know, we ch he's, I mean, we challenged everybody. And he took that challenge. Uh, but I think it's a few different things. Um, he kept it simple. Um, stayed in the present. And then I think more than all of that, our guys just look to find him in the right situations where he can get some easier shots. Right. I mean, sometimes when you're a, when you're a guy like him or a guy that can score like that, and even BC went through this a little bit last year, I thought, if you're not getting the touches and you're a, you're a guy that can score like Gabe, what happens is you just you start to force the issue. And I just thought we did a lot better job finding him consistently. And we just played way more unselfish like we just did. So when you you know, when you play like that, um, and you know you're going to touch the ball, you're, you're just going to make more of the right plays because you just trust that everybody's playing connected. So I thought he had a great mindset. His dad was here, which is always good. His dad coached him in high school, and nobody knows him better than his dad. And so he was here for the weekend. And, um, but I'm really proud of how he responded. He played very well both nights. You talked about, obviously, the zone. It seems like you guys didn't – you were comfortable all night with it. Was there anything in particular that you felt like – well, first of all, we've had a heck of a week of practice, so that's one. Uh, our guys had great synergy and were very unselfish. And then, you know, I said it last year, like, we, we played well against their zone a year. I mean, last year, um, it was their man that we really struggled with, you know, a year ago. Now they're a very different team, but, you know, we have a lot of versatile parts on our team. We have a lot of guys that can do a lot of different things. So depending on how they adjust, you know, we have various things that we do against zones and, Tonight, for the most part, we just did kind of our one simple continuity, or not continuity, but it's kind of a read and react, but it's very simplistic. And when you have guys that are willing passers, you can kind of manipulate that zone in a certain way. And, you know, when you got a guy like BC, you can kind of stretch it and pass it and finish plays around the basket. And Marco's really good in that mid-range. You know, he kind of got going early that way. And, and, then, and then we were able – the two things that zones are weak against, transition. We got out and – when we really separated, Gabe hit those two threes in transition. And then uh, zones are weak on defensive rebounding because it's just so hard to get matched up and hit a block out. And obviously, we really got to the offensive glass at a high level. To follow that up, did you feel like you got to that zone, especially early? I mean, three out of the first four possessions, you know, you found some cracks. Um, 
you know, Gabe hits a 10 footer, Marco inside the elbow. When you're able to split a zone, do you think that alters what Washington wants to do? It's, comfort? Yeah, I mean, zone, zones are, I mean, we play a little bit of zone, right? We've seen more zone this year than we maybe have had in my career. Just I think more teams are maybe doing it, but you have to, zones try to get you on your heels. They just try to get you on your heels and stand around. And and that's what they want you to do. You can't play that way. You got to be on attack. Gabe did a good job with that a year ago as well. When I watched this play a year ago, get, and it was ironic that the very first play, he splits it and gets into that gap and hits his little pull up, which he struggled with a little bit this year, but he's good at it. Like he makes them in practice all. So it's just a matter of time before those start falling consistently. Uh, I think he called glass on that one too in the first half. I thought I heard it. Uh, um, but you do. You have to have it all. You got to be able to pass, and you got to be able to look below the zone. You got to be able to look below you, right, and make the right play. play. But to be able to do that, you got to have quick decision makers, right? That's the key. You got to have guys that can make a quick decision, and we have big guys that can make quick decisions. Not a lot. Not a ton of teams have that, right? But we do, and so um, I loved how we handled it. Craig, earlier you mentioned execution was the, what led to your team's success. What specifically was it like that you guys were executing offensively, defensively? Was it just the attitude? What was the execution? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, it was. It was like let's get. So first of all, I mean, right? I mean, the world's not wasn't caving in, but it's semi. I don't want to say felt like that, but it was like it feels like okay, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Like, well, if you have ten things that are going wrong, cut them in half. If you feel like there's six things that are just going, cut them in half. What are we going to really focus on? So it was defending and rebounding, right? Being tougher into the ball, for example, and then just executing and making the right reads on your progressions, right? And I just felt like sometimes we were just going on our own sheet of music, quite frankly, and we just weren't making the right plays consistently and trusting our teammates. And sometimes when you're young and inexperienced, like sometimes that happens. But that's where I also challenge our guys to take the next, it's time to take the next step. Can't be young and inexperienced anymore. It's time to move on. Two more questions. Do you feel like this was maybe the most complete win of the year? Arizona's going to come to mind, but how do you feel this compares? Hmm. Probably the most complete weekend. Um, I mean, we, we just, we, I mean, we just really took care of business at home. You know what I mean? Which good teams have to do. Uh, but we really... On both sides of the ball, we played at a we played at a high level this week. I mean, Thursday and tonight, we really played at a high level um, on both sides of it, and it's what great teams do. You paint the picture of a group that's really, really coachable and eager to learn and eager mm -hmm. to get better, and that's got to be everything with ten games to go. That's what I think. That's what it's about in any good team, right? I mean, you always you got like, listen. It's a long year. It's a six month season if you do it right, and. Um, there's always going to be ups and downs, no doubt. You're going to have shooting um, slumps, so to speak, where you, you know, I mean, that's the Washington State game. We had struggled three straight games shooting the ball, and they were on fire for their stretch of games, and that game it flipped. You know what I mean? We finally made some shots, and we held, we held them from 6 to 23. But that's what it's about. You know, our, our team, there's egos. There's high achievers in there. There's hard workers in there. Um, but we have great people, and I've said it many times. Our guys aren't perfect, but we have great character on. Uh, we have great character off the floor, and we have great basketball character. And so sometimes you just gotta, right? I mean, it's just it's a it's a long year, and 31, you know, 32 games is what we're guaranteed, and you just gotta keep them going forward. But they get along great. It's a really good group that's connected, hanging out all the uh, off the floor all the time. Obviously, you have certain groups that are. You know, t you know, better friends with each other, but we have a great coaching staff, and we have guys that love to compete and get better, and they want to be coached, and that's a big piece of it. And we have our upperclassmen do a heck of a job.